Have you ever heard about capstography or how you can use the capstrogram or the capstrographic analysis um, in your voice clinic or your voice science projects? Well, this short video is intended to show you how you can do that. Um, capstrographic analysis can be very interesting, um, especially if you have cases or subjects with varying um, voice quality across, um, for example, sustained vonations. For example, patients with muscle tension dysphonia or um, spasmodic dysphonia um, are known to have these kinds of variations where unvoiced fragments or diplophonic fragments or rough fragments um, um, can enter um, during sustained phonation. So let's see how capsographic analysis works. However, let's start by looking at the spectrogram. Um, here you have a typical spectrogram um, with voice onset, voice offset, and then here below we have the first or the lowest horizontal line corresponding to the fundamental frequency and then we have other horizontal lines, higher horizontal lines corresponding to harmonics. Um, however, this spectrogram actually is an addition of spectra at adjacent um, points in time. So here we get to see three spectra. The first coming from um, a moment where there was no voicing before the voice onset and then two spectra coming from two moments where there was voicing and we clearly get to see the um, first peak here corresponding to the fundamental frequency also here and then higher harmonics um, as resembled by the other peaks in the spectra. So spectrogram is actually an addition of adjacent spectra. Now let's see what a capstrogram is. It's quite similar to the spectrogram. Um, however, instead of um, showing us adjacent spectra, the capstrogram shows us adjacent capstra. So, um, once again, we have these three moments in time. Um, here there was no voicing. Um, then here we have the voice onset, a stable um, phonatory um, part, and then here we go to voice offset. And if we look at the um, corresponding capstra, well, in the first capstrum, we don't get to see um, a so-called capstral peak, but in the other two capstra, we clearly get to see a capstral peak. Um, and these capstral peaks correspond to the um, vocal fundamental frequency, and the higher the capstral peaks, the more um, periodic the voice signal was. And so this periodicity actually corresponds to perceptions of overall voice quality and especially breathiness and so on. So it's the height actually or the prominence of these capstral peaks that we are interested in. So let's zoom in to such a um, capstrum. So here we have a capstrum as we can see by the um, red solid line. Okay, so then here we have the capstral peak, yes, um, and we can also draw a linear fit line through this capstrum, um, as shown by the red dashed line here. Now, the smooth capstral peak prominence, or CPPS, which is a measure we use nowadays quite a lot in our voice clinics, and in our voice um, science projects. Well, this CPPS actually is 
um, the measure um, of the difference between the height of the peak and the height of the linear regression line through the capstrum at the same coefficient. So it's actually here um, the um, measure of this arrow. So this is the CPPS. Um, and wouldn't it be great if we could see the CPPS or this arrow actually in time? Because if we could, then we would be able to see how voice quality varies across time, varies across signal, vary across the recording. And so in patients with varying uh, voice quality, it would be interesting to see how much the variations are, how large these variations are. So for the signal that we have looked at so far, this is how it would look like. We have CPPS on the vertical axis, we have time on the horizontal axis, and here we have very low CPPS values corresponding to unvoiced fragments. Indeed, this was recording before um, our subject started with phonation. And then here we go to phonation. And then here we have a stable phonatory vibration part. Um, and then here we go back to voice offset. Um, and as we can see, in this example, the CPPS values during the um, phonation part is quite stable and doesn't show us that much of variation. However, if we would look at the signal that may come from a patient, then we clearly get to see um, that the variations become larger. Here we have the output of the phonanium plugin um, for capstog capstography. So here we have the, the sound signal um, in which we already see that there is a lot of variation in it, um, especially because um, we know that this was intended to be a sustained vowel A. Ah. But if we here look at the capstrogram, then we get to see that there are voiced fragments and unvoiced fragments. So here again a voice fragment, unvoiced, voiced, unvoiced, voiced, unvoiced, and then finally a voiced fragment. This um, capstrogram can be um, summarized by this summary capstrum in which we get to see a clear capstral peak. Um, this capstral peak is coming from all these voiced parts. If the complete signal would be voiced, well, then the capstral peak would even be higher. But if we now look at how the CPPS varies across the signal, then we clearly get to see that here it was voiced, here, 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 and so on. It became voiced, but there are clear less voiced and thus um, uh, more hoarse parts during this phonation. We also get to see it in the histogram of these CPPS um, values, where normally you would expect these values to be um, here um, at the degree of almost um, 20 dBs. But here we also get to see that there are a lot um, moments in time where the CPPS was much um, smaller, um, even going up to zero, meaning that there is complete um, absence of and periodicity. So this shows us that the voice quality is very unstable and even patients, um, we can have patients looking at it um, and telling them um, how unstable it is because it's very clear from this graph immediately. And then of course finally um, you can um, look at this numerical information um, which is provided also automatically if you use this plugin, where you get to see the overall CPPS, which is actually the CPPS measure we all use in the program Prat. Um, but we also get to see the minimum or the 10th percentile. 
and the maximum or the 90th percentile. Um, and so here we see that there, um, the 90th percentile was 70, 17 dB and the 10th percentile was, well, 3.5 dB, which um, already shows that there is a large variation in CPPS. And we also get this information from the standard deviation or these ranges here. So for normal voices, these ranges and the standard deviation should be much smaller um, than these values that we get to see here. So this is actually capstrographic analysis. If you are interested in using this um, Phonanium plugin, then, um, well, I advise you to visit the phonanium.com website where you can um, actually download the capstrographic um, um, analysis plugin either as a separate plugin or as part of a larger set of um, plugins um, as the Phonanium's Clinical Voice Lab. Thank you very much for watching this video.